Thank you for joining us for today's webinar presented by WireNet member Simplex IT. This is a six-part series designed to demystify key IT issues that business leaders face. For those of you unfamiliar with WireNet, we work to keep manufacturing companies around. We responsively help with company needs like advocating for infrastructure repairs, assisting with cost-saving operation improvements, and handling the red tape for apprenticeship programs. We also offer programs like today's webinar to proactively help manufacturers thrive. Like many nonprofits, companies join WireNet to support our mission. One of those companies is Simplex IT. For those of you who don't know Bob, he's one of those geeks who speaks English. He can help implement technology solutions that don't get in the way of your daily business. With that, I will turn it over to Bob to discuss today's topic, providing basic end-user IT training without training staff. What should you be clicking? Bob? Yay. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So, um, absolutely, as Ann was saying, take advantage of the uh, conversation of the text. This is one of those where I have heard me way too much, uh, and so if you've got specific questions, let's you know, let's bring them out. So what we're going to do, what we're going to talk about, uh, just first of all, here's our NASCAR slide, Simplex IT, we're a managed service provider. Uh, we are the IT department, or we work with IT departments for small, medium businesses. We do a lot of manufacturing companies, about 90 or so companies uh, throughout Northeast Ohio, and actually some outside of that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, one of the things that we do of late is uh, is Simplex TM, which is kind of related to this to, to the training we're going to go over. However, I want to stress I'm not going to be specific to how we do things or how we do the training. We also are the managed service provider. We also work with existing uh, do SQL and project management, yada, yada, yada. Here are some of the other things we've got going on. As Ann was mentioning, on the April 26th, uh, we are one of the sponsors, so we will absolutely be there with bells on, which is really annoying if the bells are loud. Uh, we also have a session going on next week on managing your inbox with Outlook rules, and uh, then next month, uh, uh, business analytics is our next WireNet event. Uh, the thing that Ann was mentioning is I wrote a book. Yay! Uh, CEO Survival Guide to Information Technology. It is available to through Amazon. If, however, you are going to the uh, WireNet uh, party uh, luncheon, you actually will get a copy. If you have a business card, we will give you a copy of the book uh, because this is honestly one of the ways we market the fact that we are the cool guys in IT. We're very approachable and we work well with others. So. Um, gosh, you can look forward to that. Won't that be fun? All right, some some caveats. Let's get to the materials, so the actual topic at hand. First of all, I actually do some training, but I am not primarily a trainer, so uh, I, I won't talk to you about it from the from from the more formal aspect of it. Uh, one of the other things is not all organizations and not all individuals recognize or value training the same. In my opinion, that is absolutely critical, and the reason being is because between the internet, between the low cost of publishing, between all of the, the, the barriers that stand in the way of uh, creating relatively low cost training opportunities, there's a ton of different ways that you can approach training your organization, training uh, your employees, and honestly training yourself. And so one of the things you have to do is you really have to gauge what methods work best for both the organization, because not all organization cultures are really empowering people to go learn stuff or to use stuff, as well as individuals. You know, we know uh, that not everybody wants to learn new stuff. In some cases, uh, people are very resistant to change, and in other cases, people want to learn whatever they want to in their way on their time. Uh, and it's and it's good to to try to. Um, to focus whatever your strategy is based on some of those in, some of those uh, aspects. So, um, and here's the other thing: if your organization is resistant to change in terms of, let's just say, gee whiz, we always do this uh, thing. We we create a uh, different letter for receivables uh, we, for every person who is overdue. Well, teaching someone how to do mail merge. Uh, is not going to be helpful if the organization isn't willing to take that new knowledge and help implement it. So that's and there's nothing worse than sending somebody to training, getting them hopefully energized and enthusiastic about doing things in a new way with new skills, and then they come back and they go, oh, that'll never work here. So 
Um, and there's actually this stuff is covered in my book a wee bit for about four pages or so. So the four popular approaches these days are essentially the online training subscription service. That would be uh, that's be one of the things we talk about. There is a lot of comp there are a lot of companies who have come up with online courses. And by online courses, I'm talking about things that are dissectable, they're measurable, but they're also like a couple of hours of courses. And these are also interactive, meaning that the employee, the, the, the student, can actually try to do things, can whether it be quizzes or here's a lab or whatever. Um, but that's becoming more and more popular and it's not terribly uh, it's not terribly expensive. Then in person customized and structure led training in some cases, whether it be for a line of business application that just doesn't have enough, um, there's not enough interest or they don't have enough opportunity to really create online classes, uh, or you're really trying to make a big change, everybody's moving to the new version of Office, everybody's learning uh, a new tool set or the like, then that's where customized works nicely. So you can do the in-person, somebody comes in, uh, or you send everybody out to a classroom or the like. So that's that's uh, that's that, but that's customized. And then traditional classroom settings, and I'm seeing this less and less. That would be where you have a, uh, a company that has a standard ACME. Here, we're giving this introduction to Microsoft Word. We're giving this introduction to Excel, introduction to SharePoint, introduction to whatever, and they're going to teach that class every month, and people from all sorts of different companies will come and, and take that class at the same time. That's disappearing for a couple of ways. One, it's expensive. Uh, it's expensive in terms of the trainers are expensive, and they're giving the exact same course every single time. Hmm, sounds like something could be automated. It's also expensive in the sense that there's nothing specialized. In a lot of cases, when people are looking to learn something about Word or Excel, and this is except for the introduction too, there's three things. I want to learn these three things. I want to know better how to do pivot tables. I want to know better how to organize my email. I want to know better how to do this, that, or the other thing. And so you end up with that 90% of the day really didn't hone in on that particular topic that was important to the individual or important to the company that was sending that individual to. So it's that's kind of fading a bit. And then internal support groups. And I was trying to figure out the best way to call this. And, and, and the, the term I came up with was <laughs> looking at it. It sounds not necessarily the best. <coughs> Excuse me. But when you have people within your organization, and this is so underutilized, we use it here, we use it very effectively, get them together to share what's working and what isn't. So if you have people, and I'm going to cough again, I'm sorry. <coughs> When you have people who are trying to get a better feel for how, you know, uh, Outlook works or Word works, encourage them by basically having a champion at your organization saying, hey, the company's going to buy a couple of pizzas. Let's get together and just look over each other's shoulder on what's working and what isn't. And to create that kind of environment that once a month we're going to get together and just review this newer technology or see how this goes. They're kind of hard to start. Uh, kind of a stone soup thing, but to get a couple of champions to just, and the company will support, it is an incredibly low cost. You know, you buy a couple of pizzas and get people together, whether for lunch or for after lunch or whatever, that's it. And to basically just be able for people to showcase, here's what I've learned, here's what I've been doing. It, it's cheaper and spit, and it can be very effective because you've got people, as long as you're encouraging it, you've got people who are going to get together and share in each other's uh, uh, performance and in each other's progress. So now you'll notice I left off Google it. And Google it is great. Google it is, Google it is wonderful, but it's, it's very hard to be focused in terms of here are the specific skill sets, the specific goals that I'm trying to actually learn as opposed to I want to Google so I know how to do this one thing. There's a, there's a nuanced difference between the two. Um, but I don't think that just Google it is a great way for an organization to say, yeah, I want to have trained individuals. So that's my thought on that. Now, what are the topics? When we're talking about information technology, 
I think that we're basically talking about these five topics. The first and foremost and most important today, in my opinion, is cybersecurity. And the reason being is because I don't care how well defined your cybersecurity is in terms of antivirus, malware protection, firewall protection, web monitoring, web filtering, dark web monitoring, all of those kind of things, you know, BYOD, encryption, so on and so forth. The bad guys are equally involved in trying to come up with ways to circumvent them. And the most effective way to circumvent them is to trick an end user into giving away access. So we're going to be doing a, a webinar next month. It's not on our calendar yet. That's talking about this. So one of the more popular ones right now that's happening is for a person to click on a link in an email or, or for, for them to get a very, very official looking email that looks like it's from Microsoft that says, we've discovered some issue, you need to whatever, uh, we've discovered an issue with your email, you need to verify the connectivity, click on this link to verify. They click on the link, they go to a website that has a very, very proper looking Microsoft Office 365 credential, they put in their credential, and all the website does is it says, good, thank you, we've cleaned it. But what they really don't realize is they just gave the bad guy access to their Office 365 accounts, complete access to it. There was never a virus. There was never a piece of malware. It just asked them for their credentials, and they entered the credentials. So now the bad guys can go to your Office 365 mailbox, which, again, you're not going to have any problems with malware or a virus, or it's not going to get caught by that because it isn't, and they could do all sorts of trauma to that person's, that individual's mailbox, uh, and it gets they're, they're getting pretty sophisticated. So cybersecurity is absolutely critical, in my opinion. If there's one takeaway on this, that's, that's where it should be. But then you've got your office automation, and I'll include productivity in here. So your office automation, how do we use, and it's traditional, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, how do we use that, and then how do we become more productive, more productive time management, more productive email management, uh, all of those kind of things that most people within a business environment could use these topics. Business intelligence, BI, and that's going to be one of our topics coming up with uh, the next WireNet uh, webinar, I believe. So business intelligence is so underutilized in terms of how do we get usable, actionable information from all of the data that we've collected everywhere on our systems so that I can look at one screen that tells me whether we're healthy or not. I can look at one screen that tells me here's where our opportunities lie. I can look at one screen that tells me I need to dig deeper and how do I dig deeper in order to see what's either working very, very well or not so well. The tools are there. The tools are not terribly complex. Um, and they're not they're not expensive at all, but a lot of organizations don't realize how to implement those kind of strategies. And then finally, the IT technical. That's the geeks, guys like me. Well, guys like me who actually know what they're doing, so not so much like me. But the IT technical, that would be where we're trying to teach whoever is supporting your information technology structure, how do we get them to support it better? whether it be servers, whether it be cybersecurity again, but more from a technical angle, uh, workstations, any of those kind of things. Now, depending upon the need of the organization, different ones of these topics, dif different companies are going to have different values for each of these topics. That's up to you as an organization to start with. Where do we want our employees to increase their skills? And... The one I did want to go into focus a little bit was the cybersecurity. Absolutely critical. Um, that's actually more and more companies or organizations are looking at getting cyber insurance to protect them in terms of any outages or, or issues or the like. Uh, and one of the first questions you're going to get whenever you're looking at any kind of, whether it be errors and omissions or cybersecurity specifically, is they're going to say, do you have an in-place training methodology? Um, 
and many vendors and uh, require or prefer, whether it's some of the new security uh, requirements or you're dealing with, you know, some of the large automotive manufacturers, they're asking, going to ask more and more, are there policy and procedures in place to train your employees as far as what they should or should not do? This is a very easy way to answer the question, yes. It is incredibly inexpensive relative to almost all the other services, at least in terms of the stuff that we offer. But you want to look for something that's com constantly up updated. So because if you're training your employees, especially on cybersecurity, in July of 2017, I guarantee you the vulnerabilities that are out there in July 2018 are very, very different because the bad guys are inventing new ways to get around things. So you want to get a service that has some kind of drip in terms of new material. So uh, what we do is we have a, about an hour and a half online course that includes uh, tests and, and, you know, verification, as well as then every week we add another two-minute training video uh, to the people who subscribe to this. And also, phishing attacks is becoming, um, uh, simulations are becoming popular where we will actually send phishing attacks to our customers uh, that look like well-formed emails, and whoever clicks on them, we can go back to them and say, hey, this was cool because it was just a test, but you clicked on this, watch these videos, take a look at this, you know, uh, reinforce the whole concept behind why this was a bad idea to click it. Not in a na nasty way, but just in a way to reinforce it. So... The online training subscription service, I'm going to talk specifically about the one that we use, but there are many others as well. What they will do is they will usually, as a subscription service, they will give you a, uh, a number of, class, uh, of, of classes that are available online. Uh, the one we use is about at 100 courses or so, and these courses... The question is, do they fall under the type of training that you want for your uh, employees? The most common ones, of course, is Office, Microsoft Office, and uh, Windows itself. So, you know, and you want to make sure it's the right version. So you want to make sure if you're using Office 2013, you want to make sure it's 2013, 2016, so on and so forth. Uh, you also have it where it is both for uh, beginners as well as advanced. So you, there's a difference between someone needing a introductory to Excel and an advanced Excel. Almost all of these are such that there is a central portal that you can use as the employer that you can then add the employees that you want to go through the training and you can view what they're doing, what their progress is, which is absolutely critical because why are you paying for a service if they're not using it? And so what's one of the nice things also with some of the services, this includes ours, but not to, not to focus on ours, uh, is you can get like 10 licenses or five licenses or whatever and only assign them to the people who are currently engaged in training and then say after a month, okay, now we're going to assign that to somebody else because you've taken whatever courses that you're going to take out of this. This is different from the cybersecurity because Office doesn't change until the new version. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Ann, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I come back? Okay. So apparently I just got um, bleated on the sound. I apologize for that. Um, but in any case, so you want to verify that it's the right version. Once you've got the right version, Office 2016 is not going to change terribly. So an Office 2016 is valid in 2016 and 2017 and 2018. The next version, which is Office 2019, which will be out fourth quarter of this year, there will be some changes. So there will be new sets of courses for that. Uh, and this stuff is reasonably priced. Uh, depending upon how, what service you're using and all that kind of thing, if you're paying more, I would say, than $200 a year per license, uh, you're probably paying too much or, or it's really good and it meets your needs. That's up to you. But that should, be, that, that I think is a good budget cost for this particular service. Okay. So, what do you want to look for? Is it appropriate to your organization? So one of the first things you want to do is you want to basically do an inventory of what do you want your employees to learn? What new things? And make sure if you're using Office 2013, you don't want Office 2016 training or vice versa. 
can you monitor progress? Again, I can't tell you, we, we have, we do internal training here, and we incentivize people. So if one of our people gets uh, a, a new certification, we actually give them, depending upon the, the complexity of the certification and the usefulness of it, we will give them either a bonus or actually a raise. Uh, so we will do that because we're encouraging that. And I will tell you that of my six technicians, yeah, the six techs that are eligible for this incentive, five of them have done it. Uh, and, and a couple of them have done it more than once. The one guy who hasn't, he only started here in November. So he's, he's still, he's still new to this. So is it passive or, or interactive? If it's passive, that means it's only just giving what I'm doing, which is just talking. And, uh, apparently I can even blank out for a few seconds and doesn't really affect the quality. Uh, you want to have it interactive. When the interactive can be either there are tests that you need to pass in order to move on to the next section, uh, or at least it records whether or not you successfully completed the section, or there are labs, or whatever. But you want, because from a learning standpoint, that's how people learn. Um, and then again, is it one and done? Is it something that you take for an hour or an hour and a half or two hours, and then once it's done, you're done with that course, and you're either done or you can move on, or is it something that you can go back to and there's new material, there's new information? That can be one of two types. One would be like we were talking about with the security, where there's, there's constantly new material being added to cybersecurity because cybersecurity is always changing. Or it could be you've taken this course on Excel, now you're going to take this course on Word or this course on PowerPoint. Either way. And with a subscription service, it's nice because you should be able to. Either you're only using the subscription service for a month or for X number of months so you can cancel it at any time and or you can transfer the transfer the license from uh, one uh, employee to another employee and take advantage of it that way okay the custom training is also good if it's if it's for the right reason that's where you have a live instructor they're leading it and you can even do this both in person or virtually one-on-one -on -one with a group, your place or ours, that's, that's, sorry, that actually is phrased as if it's our service. There's many companies who will do this. Really, here's the interesting thing. This, the good thing on this one is the custom agenda. When we talk to companies who want to talk about some customized training, what we get to is we basically say there are four things you can learn. What are the four things that you want to be taught? So forget the whole general high overview and all that, because honestly, in my opinion, custom training doesn't make sense to do that. Um, but if you could basically say, I want to be able to do pivot tables, I want to be able uh, to connect to SQL tables or databases, I want to do charting better uh, for this for this these types of data. Okay, now from a customizable standpoint, we can actually say let's focus specifically on those issues, or let's focus specifically on getting that data from your particular application. So the customized training is really beneficial if you have a customized need, and that has to be well-defined. So if you work with somebody for customized training, they should be drawing out of you what are the requirements, what are the specific things that you're looking for for your people to walk away from. Now, there's also customized training on a one-on-one -on -one basis where you have an employee, and it can be a, an employee in a critical position. It could be an employee who is extremely time hampered. Uh, it could be the CEO, the management, or the like, in which case then you're simply saying, hey, this person isn't going to do the online or will not succeed on the online or they just prefer the more personal touch, whatever. Uh, but the same thing is, is in place there. What is the what is the goal? What is the objective in that? So, which is the right? In my opinion, it's not an either or. For all four of these categories, not just the two. Again, my opinion, the first step is to sit down with the, the leadership of your organization and say, six months from now, a year from now, what additional skill sets do we want? for within our organization and you can either be specific to individuals or you can simply say these departments or the entire company 
and they can be based on either you're looking for improvements or it can be based on we're upgrading to this new version. It can be whatever. But set some goals for the organization, for the individuals, and then set some incentives. What are you going to do to help people encourage, to help encourage people to actually do these things? Sometimes the incentive is, oh, look, you get to keep your job. Yay! In other cases, it can be, we're going to do a recognition. Here's the attaboy. We're going to get pizza for everybody. Whatever. But always remember, whenever you're trying to, to talk to people about, um, increasing their skills or changing the change in any form there's those two issues uh, uh that, are, that are absolutely critical for for you to deal with one is with them what's in it for me if you don't deal with that for your employees as far as giving them a reason why they want to do this some people are great at coming up with their own with them i just want to get better i just want to get smarter terrific uh, but other people need their own with them. Yeah, I'm just going to do that because they're going to give me a hundred bucks if I go ahead and do this on my own time. The second is NIMBY, not in my backyard. That's the I'm resistant to change. So if you're forcing me to do this, so that means I have to learn new ways of doing things. I've been here for eight years. I've been doing it the same way for eight years. That's true, but using this tool, you're going to save a lot of time on the part of the other department across the hallway. What do I care about the other department across the hallway? You're not making my life any easier. NIMBY. Okay. So, in my opinion, if you're looking for an organizational change, I say start with the online because that's the easiest, that's the lowest cost, and it's also, depending upon who you work with and how you work with it, if it doesn't work out, you cancel it. So start with the online, and then based on successes, you either increase it, you ramp up, or you look for different alternatives. Applications like your line of business apps, you may be limited in that because, like I said, not all line of business apps are large enough in terms of their customers to be able to do that, but they should have some resources. Okay. If you're interested, Patty Smirk is running our training session here. Uh, we actually have a Windows 10 course that's free and available, uh, and, and you can share that with anybody. So just email Patty at patty at simplex-it.com. She'll get you a link to that. And if you want to talk about what these options are, and again, we're not these aren't sales pitches, okay? I mean, it will be a little bit more with Patty's conversation, but you'll walk away with information that you can use at other places with other companies or on your own. Uh, we'll also give you a one-month trial for the service that we use that has access to about 100 courses. So if you're really smart and sneaky, you'll get that. You'll then take as many of the courses as you possibly can and then say at the end of the month, oh, it's not for us. Trust me, we're okay with that. We're just looking to try to try to share our knowledge and our information as much as possible because that's what we do. So if you're interested in any of this, email Patty at Patty at uh, simplex-it.com, and I'll also be sharing this. Uh, uh, and we'll have uh, this PowerPoint as well, and um, we'll do whatever we can to help you. And I think that's all I've got, Anne. All right, great. Thank you so much, Bob. It was very informative. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this session and uh, that you will look ahead to joining us in May. Our next topic will be business analytics, getting the information you want out of your IT. We hope to see you then. Thanks. Thank you.